It is a $5 billion fund. Our goal will be to deploy it in the next four to five years. Okay. Uh, and, you know, we already are speaking to a lot of different companies. So we already have a lot of companies in the pipeline and, and you should see us start to make investments in the next couple of months. And I think we have an, an, an amazing advantage when you have the name of SoftBank who has become the, a very large tech investor throughout the world. We have knowledge in the market. So, uh, and, and again, you have so many venture-backed companies that are ready for larger size checks in order for them to continue to grow. I would imagine people wake up uh, who run some of these companies, these venture companies in Latin America today, very happy at hearing that there's this enormous pool of capital. Uh, I would also imagine that those who have been doing venture investing in Latin America are waking up and going, what am I going to do now? We come in at a later stage once these companies have proven that they have a proven business model that could expand potentially to other areas of Latin America. So everybody's very happy that we're coming in, that we're going to be able to supplement the investments that they have made and be able to provide the necessary capital for these companies to grow. Now, are you the final decision maker on, on, the, on the investments made by the Latin American Fund, or does MASA also get involved? We all get involved. I mean, we have a traditional investment committee that MASA is part of, and we all debate and we all make sure that we're investing uh, the money correctly. Let's move on for a moment to uh, something you and I used to spend a lot of time talking about, and you still are, of course, which is Sprint. What happens to Sprint if you're unable? to do this deal. So 5G is great, but at the same time it puts a burden on Sprint on its own. So in order for Sprint to have to deploy your own 5G network, which wouldn't be nationwide, it would be in select areas, we'd have to spend to the tune of 20, 25 billion dollars, which means we'd have to go to the dead market and more likely you'll have a Sprint who will no longer be the price leader. You guys have made something of the idea of competing against the cable companies including my, uh, my owner, of course, Comcast, being able to deliver broadband wirelessly via 5G. There are still some questions as to whether that's really going to be competitively um, possible. Uh, why are you confident that you can actually deliver that kind of a service and conceivably compete in an entirely different area in terms of uh, f video now in the home without every uh, need of a wire? I mean, you cannot run away from what is going on around the world and the concept of people never buying cable or the concept of core cutters is happening all over the world and it's happening at an accelerated pace in the U.S. There's absolutely no reason when you're able to bring that speed with that low latency why anybody would want to hire your traditional broadband. All the stuff, stuff I hear about trees getting in the way and leaves and, you know, line of sight or all the cell sites that are needed, you feel confident that you're going to be able to deliver that. Correct. Because we have a differentiating advantage that no other company in the world has. Is we have over 150 megahertz of 2.5 spectrum, and that is absolutely the best spectrum for 5G. When you combine that to T-Mobile's 600 megahertz spectrum, we are going to offer a cable replacement to most of America at a much better price with better customer service. Uh, so we feel extremely comfortable that not only are we going to compete against the Duopoly, AT&T and Verizon, but our goal would be to compete against those broadband customers that pay quite a hefty uh, monthly phone bill uh, to companies like Comcast and Charter. How many years do you think before there's a viable product in the marketplace, 5G, that will allow people to cut the cord, as you say, or truly cut it in terms of using just a broadband alternative? You're looking at the next two to three years in major metropolitan areas to basically have a product that is going to be superior to cable in terms of speed, in terms of latency, and a consumer is going to be able to save a significant amount of money in terms of combining their monthly cell phone bill and eliminating, you know, what today they oh, pay to the broadband suppliers. It will be a major moment, uh, without a doubt. Yeah.